Greetings, mortally boys and ghoulie girls. My name is Edgy Chappie, and today we're going to be peering into the darkest, coldest, edgiest racial culture this side of the Underdark, the lives of the drow. This video will be branching off from the Elf Guide to explain what happened to those elves that took the plunge underground, and it will go over the vastly different society that Drow have as compared to the surface elves. Keep in mind, however, that some fools may try to discredit me with facts and evidence-supported opinions and other such ill-supported nonsense. <laughs> These people are just posers and should be ignored whenever possible, for I am truly the only true leading source of D and no it -alitude. But before we get into the video proper, allow me to take a moment to give a brief shout out to my newest patrons of Davy's Davylicious $5 patron roll. Lil Sig! Richard Gustafsson! Bernan Arzizit! Ryan Barry! Yuri! Alex Caliber! Sean Lawton! Ashton Prince! Andrew Houston! Willow Instinct! Thestropony! Rude Wolfay! Thank you for your support. It's people like you who enable me to talk in a spooky voice and act like a glorified audiobook to thousands of people who would otherwise be forced to use... <sighs> Google. But, with that out of the way, <laughs> let's begin. <coughs> So, if you've seen my elf guide, then you understand the events leading up to Loth taking her followers into the Underdark, but what you don't know is what ended up happening after that. Much like how Coralon created his own pantheon of gods, known as the Seldarine, Loth took her own favorite followers and created her own Dark Seldarine to rule her lesser subjects and shape them into the perfect warriors and killing machines. These killing machines built huge, beautiful cities within the caverns of the Underdark to live in, which are only made less beautiful by the dagger that'll be in your eye by the time that you'll get anywhere near enough one of the cities to look. At it. In fact, drow society revolves an awful lot around murder. While drow are born into a specific drow household and so share loyalties with other members of their own household, this relationship is tenuous at best, and the drow have no attachments that can't be easily severed with a short sword. And even then, murdering members of a drow's own household is very commonplace and generally seen as a normal pastime. The more people you murder, the higher up on the totem pole you'll go up until you become the matriarch of the family and rule with an iron fist. <laughs> until a more powerful drow comes along and then severs you from your iron fist. Drow have become so detached from their original elven roots that even their trance has suffered as a result. Instead of seeing past lives, their present life, or even the lives of any other elf, a drow elf can see only darkness during their trance, and this darkness serves as a quiet respite from the otherwise exceedingly deadly day-to-day -day trials of their regular lives. If they ever do dream, the dreams are relatively normal, albeit with much more elf murder in them, or whatever it is drow like to dream about, and the drow will constantly search their dreams for clues that Loth may have sent them a hidden message on who among their family members to stab next. In fact, a lot of a drow's life is spent revering Loth and looking for their spider mom signs about who to stab next. Due to Loth's teachings, drow believe themselves to be greater than all other species, especially the surface elves, and their adoration of their spidery godmother leads them to search for signs of Loth's favor in everything that they do. Did the blood from that guy you stabbed pool into the form of a spider? Dope. Did a rock fall and kill your best friend? Well, he must have either been holding you back or he was gonna kill you first. Thanks, Loth. Did the slave you just captured have a spider crawl on it? Better make that one, you're Boy toy. And speaking of boy toys, it's worth noting that the drow are very caste system-y, with males in their society pushed down pretty low on the totem pole. They're treated like second-class citizens, although it is possible for a male in the society to raise their social standing either by being a vicious warrior or by using some EXTREME BONING to get whatever they want. However, it should be noted that no matter how good they are at EXTREME BONING, they'll never reach the success that drow females attain in their lives. There's also the chance that Loth herself will test the might and metal of any lucky drow or drowette that she sees fit, and she will pull that drow spirit down into her demon web to compete in Loth's favorite reality television show, where contestants have to complete one of an infinite amount of Loth's puzzles and challenges for the honor of not really all that much except for bragging rights. Honestly though, that's not a bad thing, since winning one of Loth's judgments elevates you into a higher social status among drow society, and even if you lie about going to the demon web and successfully completing one of Loth's tests, as long as you manage to convince everyone that you're telling the truth, Loth still looks at you favorably since lies and deceit are are just following her proper teachings. But for the people who are taken into the demon web and fail, you can lie all you want, but it's not gonna work out for you very well on account of the fact that failures are cursed with a mutated spider body! Indeed, failure in the demon web results in you being cursed to become a drider, which much like how the centaur is a half-human, half-horse, a drider has all the tippy bits of a normal drow, but they also have a spooky scary spider body from the waist down. 
You'd think that with Lolt's admiration of spiders, it would be a blessing to be the physical embodiment of arachnophobia. But no, if you are cursed to be a spider, then from then on, your life sucks the absolute worst, because now Drow Society perceives you as being so weak and ineffectual that Loth herself had to make you more powerful just so that you would be able to survive. And as we know, getting help from other people as a drow is the greatest insult one can give. Driders are immediately cast out from their city and forced to live in exile, where everything is dark and you are likely to be eaten by a group. In fact, the only reason why Driders aren't murdered immediately by the drow is because their punishment is specifically to live in exile as a malformed abomination, and to kill the Drider would cut short Loth's punishment and possibly cause the drow who killed them to be punished with spider legs themselves. Luckily, for those adventurers who find their way into the Underdark, Driders are naturally inclined to dislike those dickbag drow who cast them out, and any Drider that survives for a period of time in the catacombs of the Underdark will get used to where to go, and more importantly, where to avoid. This could prove invaluable to would-be spelunkers who require a guide to keep them away from the more dangerous parts of the dark, but heed my warning when listening to a drider, because no matter how cursed, spurned, and hateful a drider has become, inside, that is still a drow, and it will teach you that lesson the way all drow teach lessons if you aren't careful. It might even lead you home in a misguided attempt to regain some status with its house, turning you over as a slave in the process. Of course, this could never work, but being enslaved by the drow is always a very real concern. See, drow are very big on the idea of what's mine is mine, and what's yours is mine, and you are mine, to the point where slavery makes up the backbone of their productive workforce. Humans, dwarves, and especially other elves are captured in raids against the surface world and taken back into drow societies to serve in forced labor camps, where they will almost certainly spend the rest of their days until their malnourished bodies atrophy to the point where they can no longer work, at which point they're killed and replaced with new slaves that'll eventually wither away themselves. This endless rotation of slaves requires drow to, instead of doing, you know, the reasonable thing, like maybe stop murdering all of your slaves, it forces them to go and commit raid after raid upon the surface world to capture more and more people to serve in their metaphorical slave machine. And those slaves can forget about praying to whichever god they believe in because the only pantheon that will hear them is the Dark Seltarine, made up of Loth's original favorite followers who ascended to godhood to assist her in ruling her masses. Drow have a very particular set of gods in their pantheon, such as Gahuandar, the witch that lurks, an ooze monster that is equally likely to reward its followers with a true treasure trove, as it is to reward them by devouring them in a gelatinous cube. Then there's Keptolo, Loth's favorite consort and the quintessential male drow god that has equal parts pex, smolder, and swordsmanship. There's Kiar and Asali, the spirit of vengeance that most drow go to only when seeking a way to dick over their fellow dickbag drow. There's Malak, the god of rebellion and chaos that is not allowed near the good furniture. Selvatarm, the warrior god with eight arms, each ready to smack that ass. Veyrun, the other male drow god that acts as a foil to Keptolo by representing superiority, arrogance, and all other things that make drow edgy and is therefore considered Loth's favorite son. And lastly, there's Zinzarina, the goddess of assassination, stealth, lies, misdirection, and mind decree, making her a fan favorite among drow. Although, technically, there's also Illidra... Illidri. Although technically, there's also Elidri, but you'd be hard-pressed to find a drow that worships her outside of the surface world because she represents the edgiest thing ever to a drow. A good drow. She calls to the drow when they are on the surface world and the moon is out, and she tries to convince them that, hey, maybe shank murdering things isn't cool, which inadvertently has turned Elidri into a hippie drow that just wants peace and love, man. Of course, any drow who do decide to go rogue and make a new life on the surface will have to deal with constant suspicion and rampant racism from anybody who knows what the drow are and that drow will always be looking over its shoulder for the day that its people come looking for it, ready to make another sacrifice to Loth. But that'll about do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like and comment if you did. Subscribe if you want to be a cool dude, and maybe support me on Patreon so that I can slowly make my entire life revolve around D&D. Also, if you want to stay up to date on all of your Davy news, I keep a link to my Discord and Twitter in the description below. But yeah, Davy out.